or private correspondence to the reverse of a public document. You have turned your private into public legally in their system. So it gives you an opportunity to respond to a summons, to a demand, to a threat. But with this knowledge now, I hope you realize that if you're responding and you're rejecting a rejection notice or other, uh, other form of, of notice as executor, you will not be signing that because you're not granting anything to them and you're certainly not going surety to their claims. And you certainly won't be typing your name at the bottom. All that will be at the bottom is uh, General Executor or Office of General Executor. And you won't say yours sincerely or yours faithfully because if you use yours faithfully, yours faithfully means as a servant, faithful servant. It would simply be regards or without any, any uh, uh, final, just simply General Executor at the bottom with no signature. So I hope that clears up some of the conventions in their system and starts to get into what it means to be an executor and how you hand yourself as an executor. Which now brings us to the question of how do we in fact handle ourselves as an executor? What does it mean to be an executor? And how do we prove to them that we are an executor? Well, while we've sent in the ecclesiastical deed polls, and many of you have done that, and I am most grateful that many of you have taken that upon to do that because it is a moment of history. It has meant something to do that. It has been a form of notice to the system that their time on trickery has come to an end. While we've done that, we also need to recognise a number of things in their system, particularly that the role of general executor and this remedy is actually built into their system. When we send documents to them, unless it is glued on the back of one of their documents, as we described, unless we have had it notarised and then recorded into some public record, so unless we have done public notice and public record, our documents are private. And if they're private, when it comes to a court matter, the judge can claim in their system, and it's absurdity, but it's still part of their procedure. They can say, I can't see it. And this has been one of the problems that many have faced when they've been putting in their own documents. They've been putting in their own documents, and those documents remain, in effect, private documents, or documents that the clerk can choose not to admit as evidence. So how do we prepare documents that prove you are the general executor of the estate? You are the occupant of the Office of General Executor of the Franco Collins estate or the legal person estate in a public form that they cannot deny. Because if you have these documents and you do put them onto the record in a court case, we'll get to in a moment one of the challenges that they have, which is once you tell them to zero out the account and they don't, then you have got them on toast, absolutely got them on toast. So there are a number of ways in which a private document can be made public and there are a number of ways to use public documents as the general executor. I won't go into these documents in detail and please bear in mind that this is just going to be a broad series of examples without getting into the nitty gritty. For example, the IRS being the primary administrative collection arm underneath the IMF, to which other tax officers also have a connection, do provide the ability to register entities that create a trust relationship. In other words, you can, in the creation of an EIN, register the estate and register who is the 
executor of the estate. You can furthermore, once you have that, use documents that the IRS provide that give instruction to trustees from the executor in the administration of trusts. An example is Form 56. The only negative aspect to these forms is that on a number of their forms, they require at the bottom of them that you sign and that you revert back to the role of being a trustee. The one thing that you have a right to do, you've always had a right to do, those forms are forms created by statute and statute is the policies of the trustees. It is not the policy of the executor. So if there are elements of the form that do not conform to what the executor wishes, wishes to communicate, one merely needs to get a ruler and a thick black marker and rule out those elements that are irrelevant and make clear that they are irrelevant. So that's one way of creating forms that prove that you are the executor and then having them time stamped into the record of a court, proving that you are the executor of the estate, the general executor of the estate, and that they are the trustees and the matter must be resolved. Another is to get your private documents notarised and when you get them notarised and the notary is prepared to hold them in due course, then that means that they have been uh, entered onto the uh, public record and that they have been public no uh, publicly noticed. You can also then uh, have your documents registered by the most senior clerk in their system in terms of the record uh, of the, or the registrar of the Court of Public Record which, of course, is your town clerk, who is also the clerk of the magistrates. We spoke about this last week, that the town clerk has all these amazing reserve powers and is not only the clerk of the guardians, but is the clerk of the magistrates, is also the clerk of the peace, and is also the registrar of the court of public record and is also the agent of the privy council. So whenever you go and get your documents recorded, with the public recorder, that is another way of getting it recorded into the system and then taking it down to the uh, clerk of the court and getting it entered into the record. Whatever you do, it is extremely important. If one is to enter a court and claim to be the executor, that you absolutely go and make clear that you are, you have evidence for this. Now, in the next few days and in the next couple of weeks, what I'm talking about will be made clear in the information that is on one heaven that will be moved to the court sites of Eucadia. This information is not up on the sites yet, which is why I wanted to go through this material with you now and apologise that it's not there, but so that you have some idea of the things that you could be thinking about. If someone has an urgent issue at the moment, I hope through your review and those that are listening that there will be enough people to help you if you go to University of Eucadia to help you through. But over the coming weeks, we will have material available that gives example by region of to how to establish publicly recognised documents that you are truly the occupant of the office of executor of the legal person of state. Then once you have public evidence and once you have uh, and you understand what it means to be the executor, then the question becomes, what is the next step? Well, what is the next step is to recognise that all these officials, by presumption, ultimately, are public servants. And when we went through the 12 presumptions of law, and I'll refer back to that again because this is relevant to what we're discussing. The 12 presumptions of Roman law 
are listed under Article 299 of Roman Court, and it's Canon 3228, the 12 presumptions when one goes to Roman Court, Canon 3228 of Article 299. These people are public servants and they are bound, duty bound, to perform the actions that the executor instructs. So once you can prove without a doubt that you are the general executor of the estate, the legal person, then one merely needs to administratively prepare the paperwork and give them an order to zero out the account to shut down the matter, to dismiss it with extreme prejudice. Now, if they don't, then you have them clearly in breach of duty, clearly in breach of duty. And again, we will have material on this and how to proceed on this over the coming weeks. That leads us to the most important element of being a general executor before we talk about some of the matters that I raised with Michael Barr and we talk about the Constitution and, and uh, the present um, administrations. Before we get that, let's talk about the most, most important thing about being a general executor. A general executor does not behave like a violent child. A general executor does not seek revenge. A general executor does not send in ridiculous um, demands and bills. A general executor doesn't write bills and say, you owe me $100 billion. You want to know a general executor of an estate of a legal person, then this is what we mean when we speak of Yeshua or Jesus or Buddha or Muhammad. people who came as teachers, people who came as guides, people who came as healers. If you look at the words as they're ascribed in the New Testament, nowhere do you see the character as written of Jesus standing up there and saying, I am the Son of God and I will do what I like and you're all toast. One of the problems we have when we finally start to see remedy, is that itch to throw our weight around. An executor always behaves respectfully. Now, even if these people have been disrespectful to you, that is their injury. Don't respond to an injury by creating another injury. And just to share an example on this, there was a fellow who wrote to me oh, months ago, months and months ago, and it was relating to his children having been taken from him because of a distressing situation where his ex-wife had an addiction problem and the children were taken into foster care. And he was absolutely desperate to get his children back. But through this process, I always maintained to him, I said, please, Consider your behaviour here. It's not merely the matter that your children uh, have been taken from you, but if you approach this as an angry man, even though you are fully justified to feel that anger, they will use your anger, they will use how unbalanced you feel against you, and they will arrest you or, or do terrible things to you as well as the children, and you will never see your children again until they're grown up. Now, try as I might, the anger this man felt, and I could only imagine how much torture this man was in. He could not and was unable to control it, and he ended up spraying all kinds of emails and all kinds of threats. Well, he even put threats to me. That's how desperate he was. But he certainly put threats to the system, and they ended up putting him in a psychiatric ward. Now use that example because the system will push us to the very limit to behave irrationally. They want us to behave irrationally. They need us to behave irrationally. The challenge of being an executor 